Yeah. Okay, just a bit of an update on what I've been doing. It's now the next day and still snow on the ground. So, got my soldering iron out and I've basically connected all my wires, all my lives. Um, I've still got to do my earths yet, which I'm gonna join a cable onto and I'm gonna run it. Um, over to this bolt that's here and I'm going to put a, a ring terminal on it and bolt that down to earth so as it stands at the moment everything now works as it should do locks and unlocks and also what I've done is I've hooked up the indicator flashing on the box which is the two brown wires where it says direction light. So it's plus and plus, so it's brown. Um, so when you lock and unlock the central locking unit, the replacement central locking unit, the two brown wires here, they go live momentarily. So I've been onto the internet and found out what the two wires is that I actually need, which are these two here, which is the black with the green stripe on and the black with the white stripe on, on the right hand bigger plug. So it's the two small wires. So it uh, doesn't matter which way around you do it, you just solder one of the wires into one of them and one of the wires into the other one. So now basically, you lock it and unlock it, the indicators flash. that's basically it I just need to um, I've had to use tape I didn't want to use tape but I had to use it because I couldn't use heat shrink because I wasn't cutting the wires I didn't want to cut the wires you can't put heat shrink on it you can't cut the wires especially when you're joining it in so they're taped up they'll be fine I'll tape the whole loom or zip tie the whole loom together and neaten it up I'll mount this box um, over here somewhere, probably use some double-sided tape or something, I'm not quite sure how else I'm going to fix that down. So I've just literally just got to do the earth lug, which I'm going to do now. And I believe that's it. There are certain other functions you can do, like window drop and stuff like that. Well, you know, how often do you use that? Never. Most people don't even know you can do it. And also, something about the siren and stuff, the horn which I might look into, but I probably won't. So I'll come back when it's uh, it's all uh, fully, fully done. Right, that's pretty much it. It's all back together. The mobiliser unit is all back in again. That's the plug at the bottom of the seat. Uh, the new central locking unit, that's all over there. That's the aerial. There's another connector over here. I don't know what that's for. But I'll leave it there. So I just need to clear all this out, tidy up, put the seat back in, and that's pretty much it. Right, so I had a few issues with the boot release. Releasing when you press the button on the fob. But it did work and then it stopped working. And what was happening was is that when you were pressing the button on the fob, that was moving, but it wasn't moving far enough to release the boot. Now I have read online that the power of the central locking unit isn't enough. The aftermarket central locking unit isn't enough to, to you know, enough power to, to, to basically flip that switch. So you'd have to put in a relay. So that's basically what I've done. So I've put in a relay now. I probably would have done this at the alarm unit. The seat's back in again now and everything's been put back together. So I'll just show you a little diagram of what it is that I've done. Now this is a basic setup of a standard relay. This is just a standard, it's just a standard relay. It has these pins on it. <clears throat> so basically how a relay works is you have a coil that's powered usually by 12 volts and then to ground. 
12 volts then to ground and then this then fires a switch so this is basically just a, an electromagnetic switch for load so if you ever want to power a heavy load but you've got a, a light um, power feed then this is how you need to do it but I've used it for earth so basically what I did is I found the blue black wire which comes from the alarm unit which is this wire here you can just see that there I've cut it so I've cut the wire the other end of the cable this is the blue the blue and black stripes that was originally connected to this wire here so I've cut that wire and I've extended it with another blue wire okay and that then goes to the relay so the, so the, the wire from the alarm unit the blue black I've cut put a spade terminal on and I've connected it to pin 86 of the relay okay which is one side of the coil okay and then the other side of the coil pin 85 I've got a red 12 volt permanent red 12 volt signal which is the power that goes for the to the actual um, actuator for the boot lock which is the red wire here in the loom which is in the boot so I've taken all the surrounding out, taken the bottom out, and this loom basically goes across and it feeds the rear lights, I believe, and this spoiler for the rear. So I've tapped into that, put a cable, put a spade terminal on the end of it, and put it into the other side of there. Okay, so basically what happens is, when you either pull the button for the trunk release, or if you push the button on the remote, it puts this this line goes to earth because this is connected to power it pulls this switch or it pushes it or pulls it however you want to do it which make which contacts so if you push the button it earths it this fires this switch goes across and makes these two contacts live and as soon as you let go of the button or the alarm unit disconnects it it will then pull that and disconnect it so it momentarily connects it and then disconnects it so what I've basically done is I've then taken the other, the blue black that goes to the boot latch. So the wire that did originally go off to the boot latch, which is this one here, which I've connected to the relay here, um, on pin 87, I've put onto this side of the relay, okay? And then the other side of the relay, pin 30, I've just put to earth. Okay, so I've just put a ring terminal on it and just put it to earth, which is the black and green wire. Okay, so basically what this relay does is when you push the button or pull the, the latch, it pulls it to earth, which then livens up the relay if this is live, it fires that and basically what it does is it connects that wire to earth. And that's exactly what you need it to do to fire the latch. But the alarm the alarm unit obviously does it does this, but it isn't powerful enough to do it. So now when you do it. That's basically it. Okay, so I've just taken the old key blade. So this is part of the the aftermarket fob. Uh, this, so it had two screws. Pretty simple how it comes apart. Take out the screws, um, and this is the circuit board. So I've taken that out, taken the case out taken it all apart um, I put it into a vise and then knocked out a little roll pin um, so you just knock that out with a little hammer and then the blade comes out so these are the blades I've had cut which I contacted a seller on eBay and sent him some high quality pictures of my of my key so this is my old key I mean, I've checked. I've actually, I've actually checked it, and it does actually go in ignition, and it does actually work, which is odd because it's very similar. But I wouldn't say this is exactly the same, would you? But there you go. So anyway, I tried the key in the lock, and it turns. I haven't tried to start it, obviously, because I haven't done the immobiliser side yet. So I've just, I've had to file the end of the key. It has a little, little U, a little 
little slot in it. It didn't line up with my holes. So I've had to file the, the key down. You can't see it obviously because it's inside, inside there, but you have to sh uh, file the shoulder down so it lines up properly and then you just knock the roll pin back in again. It's a bit of a fiddly job. You need a vise and a hammer and a, and a punch or something that's gonna, that's gonna knock that out because that is actually quite small. So the transponder in the old key was sitting in this little slot here. So I've just popped that out um, and that basically, I will keep these keys, but that's basically redundant now. So on the aftermarket key, I've, put, I've just glued it in there, just a little bit of super glue. I glued the transponder in there. I believe that's kind of where it needs to go. Because by the time you put the key in there, whichever way it goes, I've forgotten that way probably. It's going to be close to the ignition switch, so it should pick that up and it shouldn't be a problem. So I'm going to put all this back together. And I'm going to go down and I'm going to try it and that'll be, that'll be pretty much it all done. Obviously I've got to do it to the other key, but it's the same as this one. So let me, let me put it back together. Okay, so key's now done. So, unlock the car. Okay, I'm back in, I'm in the car now. The key. There we go. Key works, in ignition, starts. Everything. Everything works as it should. Okay, right, well there you go. That's the end of the video. This is just to wrap it up, to say if you've got this far, thanks very much. Obviously, if you do like it, please hit that like button. It does, you know, really help to try and, you know, grow the channel. I'm going to try and do a lot more videos. Um, you know, subscribe if you think you might like some more videos from me. Um, it will help. So that's basically it. One old Porsche key. Horrible buttons. Didn't work. Um, no internals inside so for not a lot of money so these two fobs with the central locking a unit was I think 13 pounds I mean you can buy just standard fobs to go with your original keys it was slightly cheaper um, so you just basically put the fob on your original key ring. Now, that was what I was originally going to do and possibly just buy some blank. You can buy them for like seven pounds off of Vivo, which is just like new cases that you can put your key into. They give you a blank key, but you can take, there's a, there's a little spring there. You just, that little plastic thing, you, you pop that out with a little screwdriver and the blade comes out. So you can actually put your original blade back in the case if you want to do it that way and that's what I was going to originally I was going to do I wasn't going to go for all the hassle of getting the key cut and everything like that but as it turned out I'm glad that it did because I'm happy now that there's one key or two keys and everything is all done it's all in one key so the central locking unit with the two keys I think was 13 pounds I think the ones without the key just the fobs I think are nine pounds I think you can buy them for I think they're all exactly the same so the keys seller on eBay, I contacted him and said, he said in his ad, send us some pictures. So I sent him some pictures and says, look, I've got one of these keys. I took some pictures of the key, both sides, all different pictures. I said, I've got two of these keys. Can you cut two of these keys? And then I sent a picture of this fob, which I think is just an Audi. It's a standard Audi. I mean, it's got no numbers on it. 
It's a standard Audi type um, fitament. So that's what I think I searched for on eBay. So he cut two keys and sent them to me within two days. I think with a, I think they were nine pounds each. So I think they were discounted to eight pounds for two fobs, for two keys. So that's it basically. So that then ends this video. So I hope uh, if you've got any questions, anything I've forgotten, put it in the comments and uh, I'll reply and hopefully I can help you out. So thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you soon. Cheers, bye.